Hello beautiful and magnificent beings. Welcome to your oracle and tarot reading. And before we jump into Pile One's messages this week, I want to say thank you to somebody out there who anonymous, anonymously sent me a new deck of cards. Thank you so much. I really love them. And these are the cards that we're using. So the very first card is Capricorn. And you don't have to, some of you might actually be Capricorn, but you don't have to be Capricorn in order to receive the message. So let me grab the book. And the interesting thing about these cards, um, let me show you the book. The cards are called Spirit Allies, and it's broken down into five groups. There are goddesses, there are crystals, animals, plants, and what they refer to as cosmic allies, which is all of the symbols or the um, the sign, the verdi 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 verdi. Oh my God, zodiac! Jesus. <laughs> the zodiac symbols so let me show you what i have here and it's a really beautiful deck as well and here we have yours i just want to show this really quick i cannot even though i have my glasses on i cannot see it uh, this far away so i'm gonna have to um, pull it away for a second but i just wanted to show that to you in case you want to freeze it and read it yourself Okay, Capricorn, oops, Capricorn, boundaries are healthy. So this is the message regardless of whether you are Capricorn or not. And also last week, I think I did a video for boundaries, which no coincidence, um, it's the throat chakra video. And so the message here is illuminated by their laptop screen, Capricorn has been grinding away on their latest project. They have worked diligently to get to where they are today. So they are dedicated to what they've been doing. As soon as the time comes, however, Capricorn knows that it's time to shut it down for the day. Setting clear boundaries has allowed them to get to this point. Establishing boundaries can be difficult, especially if you aren't quite sure where you need them. Capricorn is here to assure you that everyone needs boundaries of sorts, creating a balance between work, your social life, and being able to decompress after a long day is a recipe for success. It's okay to be ambitious as long as you remember to stay in your integrity and not stretch beyond what is good for you. And they also have what is called a journal prompt at the end. If you want to use this, um, right here is talking about journal prompt. Where do I need to establish healthy boundaries? Okay, especially as I had talked about in that video, uh, this time of season can be the most difficult dealing with family and friends. We really need boundaries because a lot of times our family does not respect boundaries. They're very pushy, especially, you know, older relatives or grandparents, they're stuck in their ways. Or, you know, as we get older, sometimes we just don't care anymore. But for whatever reason, um, it's time for you to take the time to reflect what boundaries do you need to put in place. Um, and I feel like this is something that has needed attention for quite some time. The energy I'm getting off these cards. Um, most of you know what that is, but for those of you, if you're not sure, just think of any situation where you didn't feel really comfortable or confident or you felt like maybe somebody was being a little pushy or they forced you to do things you didn't want to do. Um, anytime that you don't feel good or your heart's not into it, that's a sign right there that you need to put down a healthy boundary. And the next card is Gentle Gardener. And it looks like some little fairy children sleeping or lounging around on some eggs and there's like a mother i think mother earth an older elderly lady watching over them gentle gardener okay so any time that we're making changes in our life especially the most difficult decisions 
right boundaries, for example, when we're used to letting people take advantage or run all over us, we need to take that power back and stop being a victim. Um, be gentle with yourself. Don't beat yourself up over this. Even if it still happens while you're trying to change it, that is to be expected. Um, you want to be gentle with yourself. Be caring. Don't beat yourself up because, you know, maybe you've been doing great and then somebody came along and just swept you off your feet, not in a good way, and it happened again. And, you know, that can be frustrating or we might want to beat ourselves up. But do not do this. That will only hold you back. Just acknowledge what happened. And as somebody who has been doing this for many years now, <clears throat> It can happen, especially, you know, maybe you're not as focused at the moment and somebody just comes up and takes advantage or something happens. Just make a mental note, you know, I did my best, I tried to handle it my best regardless, and I'll just be better prepared next time. What did I learn from this, you know, situation this time? So next time, if I see the signs, I can better handle it. Just learn from it and then let it go. Don't beat yourself up. Don't feel guilty because that only causes further setback and solitude number 13 and this is number two sorry number two represents uh, harmony and balance also manifestation and dreams uh, 13 I'm sorry I cannot remember what that is but also three and one four um, that might speak to you as well and solitude peace this especially again as I was saying when we're making some of the most difficult changes we need to take that time out to ourselves you know people distractions if you're trying to do something that you're not used to doing and you haven't formed a new habit pattern yet you really need to take that time to be alone to reflect on what it is you want to work on or maybe it has to do with certain people how to better handle those situations and just prepare yourself maybe journaling, reading books on this particular topic. Um, three, three on the clock for those of you into numbers. And also, um, or, or videos, or talking to someone that you trust and care about that can help you with these sort of things. So it's always important to spend time alone regardless of where you are in your life and what's going on. It's just healthy and we need that time to reflect. And the next card, number 12 or 3, slow and steady, again, going with gentle gardener. Be patient with yourself. This may take several times, um, depending on where you are in your journey. For those of us who come from horrific <laughs> backgrounds, horrible parents or, you know, relationships and just, you know, most of our life, or growing up as a child and just not knowing boundaries or that they even existed. Slow and steady, baby steps. As long as you're making the effort and doing the work, um, this is what's most important, or taking a break when you need to, but not trying to push and rush because, you know, that, again, that's something else that'll cause a setback. If you're not quite ready or know how to handle certain things, just very patient with yourself taking that time to reflect, to heal, to figure out exactly, again, as I was saying, maybe there's a certain person or situation that you need to handle first and foremost, and just figuring out how to do that. So let me grab your tarot and see what, let's dive a little deeper. And the first tarot is, Knight of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and Earth. The upright positioning of this card is an indication of a need to be trustworthy and reliable. The daily grind of responsibilities might not be the most exciting, but if you put your head down and put in the work, you will reap the rewards. Hard work, productivity, Routine, responsibility, slow and steady. Oh my God, that came up twice. Um, financial growth, achievement, and good investment. So that could be finances, but I feel like this the good investment, it's this progress. This is what the card is telling you, what those three are reflecting. You know, doing the work, putting in the effort, because, you know, it'll only help things get better. And 
it will affect your life in ways that you might be surprised. Like when we work on one particular thing, that has a tendency to branch out into other areas of our life. So that's very exciting. The universe is saying, yes, you're being supported. This is your time to start this, this progress, setting up yourself for the future. Beautiful. And let's see, the next tarot is Five of Cups, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, and Water. You're suffering a big heartbreak, perhaps divorce, breakup, abandonment. Again, as I was saying uh, about childhood abandonment issues, bereavement with all the negative connotations that this card can bring there is the positive message that no matter how dire your situation there's always a silver lining you just need to choose to see it yes remember i was just saying about how things can only get better um, acceptance loss sorrow moving on finding peace personal setback self-forgiveness again i was talking about that bereavement so just trying to come to terms with all of these things and something else that you might go through that I definitely went through was when I started healing these type of things and setting boundaries, I found myself getting really angry um, at a lot of these people like forgiveness. I, it was very difficult, but at the same time, I allowed this to happen. I was a victim. Um, and I didn't see that for a long time and I would be angry at these people and then I realized, you know, I can't completely blame them because I let them do it to me. So forgiving yourself, forgiving those people, you know, recovering from the loss, we want to heal and let all that go so you can move on like it's saying here. Finding that peace. And let's see, we have one more tarot. And then we have three activations or healing spells. The last one, Hanged Man, Neptune, Pisces, Water. Pisces came up twice for you. You might be a Pisces. We are very sensitive souls and we tend to allow ourselves or get taken advantage of sometimes. <laughs> we just want to see things and everybody with a light heart and caring nature, but you know, that's us. People are not, you know, not all people are like that. Um, the upright position of the hangman indicates a penance. Others may not understand the need for sacrifice. Okay, the sacrifice, I feel like that's coming in here where it's talking about solitude. I'll get to that in a minute. Others may not understand the need for sacrifice, but you see things differently as you walk this path alone. This may be a time of indecision, but take the time to breathe and internalize your choices before making any crucial decisions. Again, this is everything that we've been talking about. So that's a major synchronicity. Pause, surrender, letting go, new perspective, enlightenment, acceptance, deep insight, sacrifice, change, and release. Wow. Confirming, bringing it all together, synchronicity. That is beautiful and that's, you know, I like it when it repeats like this because even though sometimes it can be the most simple thing, it's very simplistic, but sometimes that is how we need to hear it. That's how we need to approach it. Taking the time, being gentle with ourselves, giving this, you know, going into hermit mode and slow and steady and just reflecting on everything, planning. So let's see what your last three cards reveal. And these are like little spell spell cards, or you can see it as a blessing. You might want to take a picture of the symbols so you can reflect on it daily. Self-confidence, strong self-belief, and sense of worth. This is what we gain out of doing this work. Um, not just working on the throat chakra, but the solar plexus. Those two, I find, go hand in hand. Um, and once they're aligned, you will be amazed at the person the things that you take on, the person you become, it's just, you will become a completely different person that you never would imagine that you could be. <clears throat> and the next card, perseverance, slow and steady with perseverance. I love it. The motivation to keep going despite odds. <clears throat> it's talking about that again. 
So take the time when you need it, whether that's alone or just, you know, maybe trusting someone again that you can talk to, but reflecting and doing what it doing what it takes to stay motivated. There's so many different tools available to us now. Anytime you start to feel like you're lacking or you're just not motivated, find something that brings that energy back up so you can stay focused on this goal. And insight. Open the third eye to strengthen intuition. Intuition is another thing that will help us through this progress because as we're learning to trust ourselves and we're setting healthy boundaries, we grow in our confidence, we have learned our lessons and it's so much easier to avoid situations most of the time. Again, like I said, sometimes somebody will still catch us off guard and it's like, oh, can't believe I let that happen. <laughs> but your intuition will strengthen and it will become a lot easier to catch these things and stop them before it happens. So those are your messages for the week. I hope they're helpful. Good luck on your path, highest blessings and infinite gratitude. Sat Nam. Hello beautiful and magnificent beings. Welcome to your tarot and oracle reading. Let's see what messages the universe has for pile number two. And I want to give a shout out to someone in case they're watching this. Um, I just got a beautiful new deck of cards. It came without a gift card. So I don't know if that was an accident or if you meant to remain anonymous. But either way, I just want to say thank you. And that is the, car the main card that we're using today. Uh, and Isis, the goddess Isis, number six. And this deck is very unique. Uh, let me show you the book. It is called Spirit, uh, uh, Spirit Allies. I'm having trouble talking today. I don't know why. Um, and it represents five categories. We have animals. We have plants. We have the astral. Uh, we have crystals and animals. And so for pile number two, we have Isis. So let me open this up. I just want to show you because it's really small and I cannot see that far away. So I need to pull it away. Okay. I am attuned to the cycles of life. The ancient Egyptian goddess of healing and magic, Isis, is known for a great mother and protector of the dead. Her her priestess were healers and midwives as she was originally depicted as wearing a headdress that represented the throne. Eventually her crown changed to that of a cow horn, that of cow horns surrounding a solar disc that which emphasized her maternal role in divinity. Isis is related closely to the cycles of life and can teach you how to live in the rhythm with them. While the cycles of life include the flow of life and death, there are also the cycles of the moon and the changes of the seasons. Living with these natural shifts can help you to realign your body and mind and connect with nature in a deeper way. Eating foods that are in season, rising with the sun and using dim light at night are only a few ways that you can get in touch with your intrinsic patterns. And they have a journal prompt if you want to use this. The question is, how can I include syncing with the natural cycles in my routine? Okay, so right away before I get to anything I'm hearing, Jim Quick, I've actually mentioned his channel before. Uh, for some of you, I think this is really going to help you. It's about brain health, but there's so much more like uh, where the, the book was speaking about um, healthy diet and eating seasonal foods and things like that. He talks a lot about diet and supplements, but also sleeping and changing the lighting, which really makes such a difference. We might not think so, but when you try it, it is just amazing. His channel has helped me so much. So I feel like some of you, um, or actually some of you I've talked to, and this has been happening to me as well, which is kind of, I thought unusual, but 
as it's talking about changing with seasons and earth and moon like this is something that has really been affecting me more than it used to and i'm feeling like i need to be more aligned with these things but it's also happening naturally like the moon for example the moon phases are suddenly all of this information has been coming up like making me pay attention where before i always thought it was interesting but i wasn't really into it but by learning the phases of the moon, certain times of the month affects us in different ways and how to better use that energy. So for some of you, it might be that as well. And the first card, number 17, and also eight, abundance card, ghost lands. And look, it's all iced over. The clock has stopped. So I feel like this is saying there are a lot of you that have been living in a certain way, certain patterns for a long time, and you might be feeling stuck. You might not even realize you're stuck, but the universe is saying it's time to let go of this. And with number eight, um, by moving out of this and learning to go with the phases and just the changes, I feel like that's going to bring more abundance because of living in this frozen um, state of being or thinking I feel like there's so much that you're missing out on and the universe wants you to be abundant and so taking a little time to reflect get that clock moving again figure out exactly what you want to change in your life right now two 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 on the clock for those of you into numbers and also two two eight again abundance so maybe making a list we're coming up on the end of the year so this is another great time to just kind of start to make subtle or major changes in your life but the universe is saying and also for those of you that work with uh, deities uh, or goddesses next time you're doing a ritual or a meditation call in isis ask for that support and spark number 34 and with this picture, I'm seeing this woman, uh, let me see if I can hold it up. She's playing a violin in their hearts, but there's also blood drops on her fingers from her bow. And I'm hearing, uh, what is that expression? Blood, sweat, and tears. Sometimes if somebody's put a lot of work into something, and maybe that's what you've been doing, but it's not working for you. Um, another message coming through is, when we truly do what we love it is a job but it doesn't feel like a job you know our heart is into it and maybe there are some blood sweat and tears but we don't see it that way any longer so this is telling me you know coming out of that state start thinking about or maybe you already have um it's time to make changes in every area not just one area but it's time to start doing what you love and Again, I like that nature where this is frozen, there's all these beautiful flowers and colors being more connected with the earth, which reflects on the Isis card talking about the cycles and spark, reignite that spark in you. Start doing the things that you love that mean the most. And, <clears throat> excuse me, strength number 44. And once the spark starts up, you start moving, you're going through the process, you're going to feel stronger. Look how balanced, you know, she's on one leg on a rock holding, it looks like a little earth with a tree on it. And there are leaves flowing around her. And look how it's kind of gray, it looks wintry, but she is balanced, she's green, she's alive. She's flowing again, nature coming through, a balance of nature. So this is really going to strengthen you and get you going. Beautiful. So let's grab the tarot and go a little deeper. <clears throat> okay, Ten of Pentacles is your first card. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and Earth. You're blessed with wealth and abundance. Remember what I was just saying here? about the universe wants to because eight you're not receiving what the universe is trying to give you or wants to give you <clears throat> but that's all changing you're blessed oops sorry you're blessed with wealth and abundance feeling financially secure and trust that because of your success and accomplishments you will always have what you want and need the foundation of your future has been paved for sustainability feed that compulsion 
to be charitable or help others. Okay, so that could be part of your spark too, giving back in some way. <clears throat> whatever way you choose, whatever you know feels right for you. Wealth, financial security, family inheritance, long-term success, stability, contribution, domestic love, home attainment. So this is just confirming what I said earlier. As you start to live and do what you love, giving back, you have more than enough and you enjoy this. And the next tarot is, whoops, upside down. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and Fire. Six of Wands. An important milestone has been reached and you're feeling confident and self-assured. Not only have you reached your goals, but others have taken notice and you've re received acclaim. Don't let guilt stand in the way of your success. Victory, public relations, or public recognition, progress, self-confidence, rewards, good news, good fortune, achievement, and promotion. It just keeps getting better and better. And all you have to do is take that first step. Start moving forward. Ignite that passion in your heart, doing what you love, giving back. That's what makes us, you know, more balanced and strengthened when we're, there's an equal give and take. The universe is coming through really powerful and working with you and revealing, you know, the future, what needs to happen now, where you've been, what needs to happen, the movement you should take, and where it's leading. Wow, amazing. A lot of times it's just confirmation, but this is like step by step. This is, I love it. Okay, strength on strength. Oh my God. <laughs> I love it when that happens. God, talk about a synchronicity. Sun, Leo, and fire. You're cool under pressure and retain compassion all the while, even if it causes you harm, you're patient and can accomplish great feats with your determination. A moth or something just flew by. Sorry about that. What is it? Moth represents a transformation. So um, you're patient and can accomplish great feats with your determination alone. Your strength will be rewarded shortly. Okay, so this is strength now, and this is strength to come. Courage, passion, subtle power, persuasion, influencer, inner strength, focus, compassion. So again, it's talking about over here in this tarot, how people are paying attention and recognize you for whatever this thing is you're doing. Maybe it's part of uh, the giving back or just your passion. People are paying attention and it's going to make you more abundant. I'm feeling like there's going to be people coming to you uh, for guidance of some sort as well. That's why they're paying attention because we're inspired the most by the people that we see doing what we want to do and we want to know how they did that. You know, what can we learn? So I think that's something that's going to be um, become a regular thing for you as well. So strength on strength, wow. And let's see what your last three messages. <clears throat> Breaking bad habits, self-acceptance, ex excellent mental health, and letting go of vices. Okay, again, ghost lands, letting go of what's no longer serving you, moving forward. You've broken through these habits. And again, it's talking about how you flow with strength, with ease, doing what you love, that spark. And the next card, protection. Strong protective magic for the family and at home. So just letting you know not to, um, <clears throat> we're over here, it was talking about maybe some fear. Uh, let me see which card, self-confidence, and letting go of any, oh, where'd it go, I'm sorry. I think it was talking about guilt. Um, something may, as you move forward, if you start to feel guilty, like you don't deserve it, this is saying, let that go. You are protected, magic, family, home, and business. So not to feel worried or afraid as you move forward or that, you know, something can be taken. That's not the case. 
you know, you always have guides and people watching out for you. Um, let me see. Philosopher's Stone. <laughs> that always makes me think of Harry Potter. Powerful manifestation of wishes and goals by harnessing universal energy, which is what you're doing. <clears throat> but I also feel like this is a normal, once you've got that uh, lit the spark, connected to the passion, you're doing what you love, you're strong in your beliefs and your goals and what you're doing, and you see how that works for you. Whatever it is you're doing, you see how uh, maybe manifesta manifesting was a challenge at one point, but now you're seeing how when you're in flow, again, it was talking about cycles, when you go with the flow of nature and the seasons and just feeling with your heart that passion within, you're seeing how strong and powerful that is, how it helps you manifest. So that's like another huge blessing. So those are your messages for the week. I hope they are helpful. Good luck on your path. Highest blessings and infinite gratitude. Sat Nam. Hello beautiful and magnificent beings. Welcome to your oracle and tarot reading. Pile number three. And before we get into your reading, I just want to say thank you to someone that sent me a new deck of cards. I have no idea who it was or if you meant to remain anonymous, but regardless, I just want to say thank you so much. It's the main card message today. Um, and this is Moonstone number eight, or no, 18, I'm sorry. New beginnings and abundance also. And let me just show you the book really quick. This is an unusual deck. Um, really interesting. It's called Spirit Allies and it's divided into uh, five categories. The Spirit Allies are animals, crystals, plants, goddesses, and also, um, let me see, cosmic I think? Yes, cosmic because it represents the zodiac. And so let's see what your message is. Okay, and also this is, I cannot see that far away. I'll show you up close, but I'm going to have to pull it away for a minute. Okay, Moonstone, number 18, I am calm. Moonstone is a white and black stone that glistens with a beautiful blue, almost opal, op, opalescent, almost opalescent in nature. This stunning stone is calming and acts as a channel for divine feminine energy. Like a lighthouse, leading a boat to safety, Moonstone glimmers and lights the way to your newest adventure. You are growing into the person you were meant to be, and it is beautiful. It is a beautiful sight to see. Take a moment to honor yourself and all that you have witnessed thus far. While the process is not complete yet, <clears throat> the progress that you have made has prepared you for what is next to come. Take a deep breath and let the moonstone fill you with relief and ease. There is no need to stress. The universe has your back. And it has a journal prompt if you want to write this. What's stressing you out and how can you cultivate more calmness? Okay, so this is beautiful and I also like that it goes very well with the end of the year because I always like to reflect back on everything and to really appreciate it and see how I've grown to note what worked and what maybe didn't go the way I want it to, but still worked out for the best, which is usually the case. Um, we just weren't quite ready or prepared for whatever it was, but there was always something good or lesson that came out of it. and. <clears throat> So maybe you're a little stressful about something right now. It's telling you to remain calm. And let's go a little deeper and see what that is. Okay, so we're working on our calm state of mind into the unknown. And there's, oh, I just noticed there's a rainbow behind her. So seven is a number of luck. And we also have abundant rainbow coming in back there. There's beautiful flowers, a bird. So 
going into the unknown is going to bring more freedom into your life. Um, I feel like maybe this is why you're a little agitated or fearful, whatever that is. And also just learning to, what's that, what am I hearing? Trusting, trusting the calm. That's kind of an unusual way to put it. Trusting yourself, uh, allowing yourself to, to be calm, to learn new ways of handling things. And I feel like this is very common for many of us when we try new things we're branching out it can make us a little fearful so just learning new techniques and ways to help guide you through this um, this reminds me of um, Brendan Burchard I love his channel he has so many great ideas and techniques for dealing with every situation you can think of especially when it comes to business things i watch his channel a lot so learning how to handle uh, being more patient with yourself and not so fearful as we're venturing out into new ideas because the moonstone is also saying it's time for you to move forward and adventure uh, into new areas so that i feel that's the strong message coming through that's why um, into the unknown is coming up twice for you and dry desert and this is interesting because um, pile number two had the complete opposite they had uh, a frozen card where everything was ice on the clock so dry desert I feel like you definitely uh, let me see what it, I'm hearing uh, so many messages coming through just a second um, not literally being in the desert, but it may feel that way to you. Like, I feel like you've been a little cut off from abundance, which could be why this rainbow and the number seven is coming in over there, which was also, again, that was similar for, uh, number two, but in the desert, you're barren. There's not much around her. She's very isolated. So you may be shutting yourself off. Maybe you've been hermiting for a while. There's cactus and there's like a single bird, but she's looking off into the sunset and look at all that purple and she's kind of leaning into it. So I feel like you, you're ready to move forward. And the purple to me is a higher consciousness coming through, maybe connecting with your higher chakras, your crown in your third eye but i feel like she's leaning into like she's saying help me i'm ready i surrender i want this help i want to move forward i'm tired of this dry desert you know i want to be abundant you're looking for spiritual guidance and this is interesting i like that this came up moonlight and moonstone number 51 so I'm hearing feminine, I think this represents feminine energy. Full moon is also the end of a cycle, but the beginning of a new cycle. And we have a fairy. Um, I'm hearing night rituals or moon, full moon rituals for those of you that do um, rituals at night or during the cycles of the moon and also connecting more with your feminine maybe you've been a little too stuck in the masculine uh, and for those of you that work with fairies or angels whatever guidance that you receive from the unseen or maybe some of you see them i do know people that see them sometimes maybe doing some work with those as well asking for guidance and again i feel like that's coming through as she's leaning towards you know the spiritual journey asking for that assistance you're ready for this and let's grab the tarot and go a little deeper and the first card is the devil saturn capricorn and earth um you're feeling trapped which makes sense because it goes with the desert Perhaps there's a lack of fulfillment in your life, or maybe you're a slave to the allure of material, materialism or substances, and it's rendering you powerless, okay? Shadow self, attachment, addiction, temptation, destructive behavior, materialism, codependency, and toxicity. Okay, so maybe that's why you've been in the desert. 
maybe that's why you're afraid to move into the unknown you've been living in a certain way that is not healthy for you anymore but you know addictions and things like this is so easy to get stuck and then we want to move forward but maybe we're afraid to or we don't know how or if it's materialism it could be any or all of those things codependency it could be a toxic relationship <clears throat> So time to do that shadow work, time to do the self work. You're going into the unknown, but you're leaving the dry desert. You're coming back to who you are. You are supported. You have everything you need. You just need to take that first step. And maybe for some of you, it's the first time. Maybe you've been living this way for so long and you know you need to change. <clears throat> Page of Cups. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, water. Listen to your heart and go with all things sentimental and romantic. Share those tender moments with someone special. Feel free to express your feelings. Dance like no one's watching and be a giant goof. Have fun and be wild, moon child. I say, okay, for many of you, connecting with the inner child, having some fun. This definitely does not look like you've had any fun for a long time. <clears throat> Creative opportunities, new messages, information, curiosity, possibilities, happy, surprise, dreamer, sensitivity, new love. Okay, so if you need to talk to someone, just make sure it's a person that you can trust, that you don't have to worry about, because if you're sharing your heart as it's talking about, you're vulnerable. So just be careful and make sure it's the right person. Try to have some fun. Do something you enjoy. It's going to help snap you out of that. It'll help that movement ignite the fire, the light within you and helping you to reconnect with your true self and with all the divine support that's coming through for you. And the last tarot is justice. Yes, it's definitely time for some justice. Venus Libra Air, your decisions will have lasting effects. If you've endured wrongdoing, that's coming through again. Uh, this card may mean that relief is incoming. However, if you've caused the pain, take this as a warning. An upright justice may also mean that you need to learn the truth about yourself or others, or perhaps some attention is needed for an important decision. I feel like it's all of those things for you. Justice, fairness, truth, clarity, equality, balance, cause and effect, law. Okay, so again, as I was saying, I feel like this has been going on for quite some time and it's time to leave that desert. Come back into nature. Again, there's a rainbow. Look at all the beautiful colors. She's connecting uh, spiritually over here with the purple colors. Um, doing some work at night. Some of you are night owls or you just feel better at, in the dark than you do. I'm working with the moon cycles. But justice, um, healing yourself from whatever was going on, the situation or person that has made you feel hurt or maybe you need to forgive somebody <clears throat> or actually forgive yourself or ask for forgiveness as it was saying. One of the two, either way, remember, don't feel guilty, don't blame yourself. We all do things that we're not proud of, but just learn from it so it doesn't happen again. If you need to give uh, forgiveness, you know, forgive yourself, ask the person for your forgiveness. If they see that you are truly, uh, if you feel with your heart, you truly mean it, you know, look into their eyes. They know that you mean that. They're going to forgive you. They're not going to hold it against you. Even if it was really hurtful, if you're completely honest, they will see that. They'll feel it and they'll let it go. Or maybe, you know, you need to forgive somebody. That doesn't mean to dismiss what they did to you or, you know, keeping them in, the, in, in your life. Maybe you need to get rid of them. But forgiveness, <clears throat> excuse me, is key here. So letting all that go, just, justice will prevail. It's all coming together. You're going to get what you, what you require to move forward and to heal. <clears throat> and look at this, happy love. A joyful, stable partnership and good friends. 
So for some of you where it was talking about that, I feel like you are leaving an unhealthy relationship or maybe you know, you've been alone because of that, but now it's time to allow love in your life again. Um, allow new friendships and partnerships is going to be very healing for you. <clears throat> and the second card, triple spiral. I think this might have came out last time. Listening to divine wisdom and joyful and joyfully learning life's lessons. Remember over here how I was saying learning that lesson? That's coming through, confirming again, not to feel guilty or bad if you did something you're ashamed of. Remember to forgive yourself. You're only human. These things happen, but learning lessons. And I feel like this is definitely, you know, a very enlightening and spiritual experience that you're coming out of. You're going through and coming out of. You're transforming And the last message is a labyrinth. Transition to a higher level of being, raising your energetic vibration, enlightenment. Remember on the dry desert card, how I was talking about all those purples and how you're spiritually connected and ready for that support in a way that maybe you weren't before, you're trusting it. I love that, very beautiful, so yes. Another synchronicity and confirmation that you are moving into higher alignment, higher consciousness through this experience. So those are your messages for the week. I hope they are helpful. Good luck on your path. Highest blessings and infinite gratitude. Satnam.